Hello and welcome to the show. The McLaren F1 that we have here is, in my opinion, the greatest piece of automotive engineering. In 1993, this car set the speed record for a production vehicle at 240 miles an hour. It was far quicker than anything that had gone before it. It would be 12 years until the Bugatti Veyron would go faster than it, and it is still the fastest naturally aspirated car when it comes to top speed. From an engineering standpoint, this car is quite fantastic, if I'm honest. Not my favourite of the hypercars, I prefer the craziness of the TVR Speed 12 and the perhaps slightly strange but I think very cool looking Lamborghini Veneno. I do like this I do like the driving position in this. No other car has you sit in the middle of it. It's, it's a completely unique thing to the McLaren F1. And yeah, the engineering behind this car is is quite fantastic. When it comes to the driving, it sounds very, very good from the V12. It looks pretty damn good as well. The handling through the corners leaves a little bit to be desired, shall we say. I'd like a car that is planted. When it, when it comes to track racing, I want the back of my car to stay on the track. If I'm sliding all over the place, I'm losing time. So I want the back end of my car to be on the road at all times and not to be moving around. This car is not quite like that. It will slide, it doesn't take very much to get this car sideways. Through some of the higher speed corners, the back end will step out. It's not, it's not inconsistent in this car, I know exactly what it's going to do at each corner, it just doesn't quite have the rear end grip. It's not twitchy, it's, it's, not, it's not that hard to drive once you, you know, I know it's going to slide through turn one here. I know we're going to get a bit of oversteer, that was a bit more than I would have liked. But it's not twitchy, I, I'm not kind of scared of this car throwing me in a wall. In many respects, it's not particularly hard to drive around this track. I can push the McLaren F1 quite hard around this Silverstone layout and not be in fear of having a, of having a really, really very big crash. While the handling may not exactly be to my taste, it did get me thinking. This is a 240 mile an hour car and it's not that hard to drive. It's really not particularly hard to drive around here. No, it's not as good handling as, say, the ACR Viper, a vehicle that, uh, that I absolutely adore. But this is not a hard car to drive. And then you compare that to the vehicles, you know, the speed cars that, that followed it, the Veyron. The Veyron is a hard car to drive because it has practically no brakes. It just doesn't stop. The Veyron is incredibly difficult to drive because it has so much acceleration, so much speed, but also an awful lot of weight, so it doesn't slow down very well. The Hennessy Venom, it slows down better than the Veyron, but has so much power it spends all of its time spinning its wheels and is also very difficult to drive. So carrying on this theme of <laughs> incredible engineering that went into this car. This is a phenomenally fast car in a straight line, and yet I can drive it around the track. It's no harder to drive than most modern supercars. That's pretty damn impressive to say for the McLaren F1. Fast forward 18 years, and you get this, the McLaren MP4-12C. Now, interestingly, the game rates this very, very similarly to the F1. There is only 5 PI difference between the pair of them. When it comes to statistics, the F1 does have the MP4 firmly beaten. There is more power in the F1, 627 to 592. More torques, less weight. It all, it all is going in favour of the McLaren F1. But 0-60 is quicker in the MP4, 3.3 to the F1's 3.4, 6.5 to 100, whereas the F1 takes 7.7. .7. That surprised me. I did not expect the MP4 to be beating the, <laughs> the F1 on that particular statistic. Of course, top speed is quicker for the McLaren F1, but it's certainly not going to be a walkover for it. The MP4 is also not a bad car when it comes to the handling. I have a few issues though with this car. It would be, I think, a little bit unfair perhaps to call it generic, but there's just something about it. It's just not quite ex not quite exciting. Again, is is a little bit harsh on the MP4, but it's the, probably the easiest way of explaining it. For example, the looks. Yes, it is a good looking car. I'm certainly not going to say that it's ugly. And if you see one of these driving down a normal road, it'll certainly stand out amongst normal everyday cars. Problem is, if you put it with a bunch of supercars, it then doesn't stand out. It's sort of 
almost generic -y supercar ish. If you ask somebody to draw a supercar, they'd probably come up with something that looks kind of, kind of a bit like this. The same goes for the handling. You know, it's not a bad car to drive at all. The brakes are actually very good on this vehicle. But it's nothing special. I don't see this car and instantly go, I must have it. I want to own one. I want to drive it all the time. It's not that, that good. It's, it's a good vehicle. It just doesn't stand out in my mind, I think. Is, yeah, is, that's probably the best way, that's probably the best way of putting it. It just doesn't stand out amongst other supercars. A good vehicle, and certainly a worthy opponent, perhaps, to the McLaren F1 when it comes to a race. So, me and Daniel got the two cars to race around the Silverstone full layout. Off the line, despite it saying it should be quicker in the MP4, uh, it wasn't. Maybe traction, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe slightly wonky fours as statistics on it. Either way, the F1 got off the line quicker. The brakes of the MP4, though, are very good. It is just noticeable. The one thing that uh, I wanted to have in my F1 was the brakes from that car. It gets stopped a lot faster. In, in, a, few, in a few of the corners, it's sort of noticeable how much better the brakes are. I would have quite liked them. Uh, of course, once we do come to a straight bit, the F1 is the quicker of the two. It's not by a huge amount. There is not a huge margin between these cars in a straight line. Admittedly, we are not getting up to their top speeds at this particular track, but very few tracks you will. So, on a, on a race circuit between the two cars, the top speed difference isn't particularly massive. It is very close, though, on this opening lap. I'm now trying to find a, a way past the MP4. But again, we come down a straight. There is not a huge speed difference between our vehicles. I know I'm not going to outbreak him into the first corner here. I, I don't have the brakes. I don't quite have the grip around the corners. The MP4 does feel a little bit better. It will still let go eventually, but it does have more rear end grip than that of the F1. I had to uh, rely on Daniel just hitting a curb. There's a very nasty curb on the inside of, uh, I guess that's maggots, the first part of this, this sequence. Very nasty curb. If you hit it, it'll bump you out wide. Uh, and Daniel did that. Didn't end up on the grass, but it was all that I needed to go along the side. We, we went side by side for a couple of corners, and then we come down the very long straight. And I can get in front, and I can pull a small gap. But as I said, it's not massive. Down that straight, I was topping out at about 170 miles an hour before jumping on the brakes. Daniel's MP4 was topping out at 165. That's not a huge amount of difference between these two vehicles. And of course, he will close up once we go under brakes into, uh, I can't remember the name of the corner, uh, at the end of the straight. Then through these next corners, the MP4 feels like it just has a little bit more, more grip. I'm having slight issues with just running a little bit wide um, over, over the rumble. So you've got to be careful. The, the, the curbs can cause the odd problems here on, uh, on Forza 5. And then we see the oversteer kicking in again for the F1. And still some more sliding. I knew exactly where Daniel was going to try, and I can't do anything to stop him. Much, much better brakes on that car. I, I got kind of brave. I thought maybe I could hold it uh, around the outside there. A little bit too ambitious, uh, really, but it was still very, very close. I, we, we may have almost traded paint. Not quite. It was, <laughs> it was lots of close racing with these two. They were very, very evenly matched as we head down the Wellington Strait, I believe. I hope I've got that one correct. I have a big dive. Daniel did not expect me to be able to pull this one off, uh, but I managed somehow to get it stopped. The F1 is not bad under braking, but uh, it's just it's not, not as good as the MP4. I was surprised I could outbreak him there. I Yeah, it was a bit of a brave lunge from, from the F1, but it, uh, it did work. And thus the race continued. For a good four laps, we remained pretty much neck and neck between these two cars. There was very little to pick between them. While I was doing that sort of review driving for the MP4, the MP4 feels like a better car to drive, yet through the corners, Daniel really wasn't making up very much time. They were very, very equal. A couple of braking zones, it would catch up, but the rest of the corners, they were very, very similar. Down the straight, I could pull away a little bit, but it was never a huge amount. It was just enough, just enough to keep out of range of uh, Daniel having a dive in the braking zones. I just had enough straight line speed to get away with it, but they were very evenly matched. They were incredibly close around the course of this lap. In the end, I think fastest lap went fractionally to the McLaren F1. I did have a few troubles running a bit wide and getting a bit of oversteer here and there, but if I could keep it all together, it was pretty damn quick 
around this track. We also may have had very nearly a big coming together. Daniel was pushing very hard in an attempt to keep up, put a wheel on the curb, and it didn't end well. <laughs> I, I'm very glad I saw him coming, otherwise we would have had a huge shunt in some expensive cars. Yeah, that we were trying, we were really pushing these cars, and in the end, the, the Daniel just got it a little bit wide. It only takes a very small amount wide at, at that corner when you're asking so much of these vehicles to have that sort of an off. So at Silverstone, the F1 had gone quicker, but it was time to hand them both over to our tame racing driver and see what they could do at the Top Gear test track. Now, despite the statistics saying the MP4 should be quicker, by the time we get to the first corner, the McLaren F1 is in the lead. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how that one works either. And on the exit of the first corner, still the McLaren F1 has a small amount of a lead. We come around Chicago. Both cars are all, all very much under control. There's no, no twitchy oversteer moments from any of them. But the McLaren F1 is starting to pull away. Under braking, the MP4 should close up a little bit. It's got better brakes, you can brake later in it. Uh, but it's not really making up a huge amount of time. The exit of the Hammerhead, the F1 is really starting to pull a lead out. You've got a little bit sideways, both cars struggling with the bumps there. Uh, but the McLaren F1 is starting to storm away with this, gets a big slide through, <laughs> through the follow through, both are quick, past the tyre wall, that's a pretty scary moment to be going sideways, you don't want to be having a car sideways at that particular part of the track, the MP4 is closed up now thanks to the F1's uh, Larry Oversteery moment and around the final corner the F1 has pulled back a small bit of its lead but it's pretty close between the pair of them, well the faster of the two is the F1 and it sets a very impressive lap time. A 115.0, only half a second slower than a Ferrari Enzo, quicker than the MC12, quicker than the Aventador. That's a good time from the McLaren F1 considering it was sideways through the follow through. That's pretty damn fast. It's not a bad time from the MP4 either. At a 15.5, only fractionally off the Aventador. But yeah, the McLaren F1 is the quicker car. At Silverstone, it was uh, a bit quicker, and I won the race at, around the Top Gear track. Our driver got it around quicker. It is the quicker of the two cars. It's also blooming fast. That's that's a very good time, considering it's PI and everything. That's a, that's a good time from the F1, with, with a sideways moment in there as well. Yeah, I, I was surprised just how quick this car was. Out of these two, there really is no question as to what I would have. I would go for the McLaren F1. It wouldn't take me very long to come to that conclusion. Uh, but don't get me wrong, the MP4 is still a pretty good car, you know. And value for money-wise, it's the better of the two. 1.5 million credits for the McLaren F1. 240,000 for the MP4. It was only half a second off at the Top Gear track. It kept up at Silverstone. We had a great race at Silverstone. You know, the MP4 is, is not at all a bad car, but I would most definitely have the McLaren F1 because it's a phenomenal piece of engineering. It's a phenomenal piece of, of mechanics. It really doesn't have any rivals. I can't... There's, there's just nothing that's quite like it. Yes, the Veyron and the Venom are quicker, but they don't drive as nicely as the F1. Both of them are horrendously difficult to get around a track. While I like the challenge in the Venom, I like the challenge of trying to drive that around a track, it's not an easy car to drive, and yet the McLaren F1 is... You know, a little bit of oversteer, yes, but it's a very, very easy car to drive considering it does 240 miles an hour. You know, I can throw it around a track and not be in any danger, really. I never felt like I was going to have a big crash with this car. I may spin it at some point, but never thought I was going to have a horrendous accident. I would have the McLaren F1 over the McLaren P1. There's no point me racing these two together, no point comparing these two. Every possible test I can do on Forza 5, the P1 would be quicker, but I still wouldn't have it. I would still go for the McLaren F1 because, as I said, there are no no rivals to the F1. The P1 has three straight away. It has the LaFerrari, oh, it has two, sorry, the LaFerrari and the 918. They're all essentially very, very similar. They're all very, very quick. They're all highly computer controlled. And I can't help but think they could go around a track just as quickly without me driving them as they can with me behind the wheel. Whereas the F1, it doesn't feel like that. I... Yeah, it's <laughs> the F1 is a is an incredible car. As I said, phenomenal piece of engineering, and I really recommend you give it a go. Despite its incredible speed, it's really not that hard to drive. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. So thank you very much for watching, and until next time, a goodbye.